The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God maketh me to lie down in green pastures. God leadeth me beside the still waters. God restoreth my soul. God leadeth me in paths of righteousness for God's name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That is Psalms 23, and it speaks of the truth for you and for me. Romana Banu Ellis was just 16 years old, living in Mexico, when her husband left her with two small children. She was poverty-stricken, so she and her two babies got on a bus, and they came to Los Angeles to work. The problem is that they didn't speak a word of English. She had just seven dollars in her pocket. She went to a cab driver and negotiated and gave him the name and address of a distant relative who lived in Los Angeles. Well, he delivered her at the door of the house and charged her the whole seven dollars. She was broke. That was all of her money. She got a job washing dishes, and then she got a job making tacos from midnight until six in the morning, every night, seven days a week. And from this job, she saved $500. And with that $500, she bought a taco machine. Today, she manages the largest Mexican wholesale food business in all the world. And she was handpicked by a former president of the United States to be the 37th treasurer of the United States. Romana said, I achieved this because I believed. I believed that God could do it. I prayed and I believed. Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, author of The Power of Positive Thinking, told a story about a surgeon who talked about the most exciting surgery that he had ever performed. This surgery was performed on a little girl. She only had a 10% chance of survival. The surgeon said she was a tiny little thing under the sheet, a gray ashen face, so frail, so weak, so helpless. Just as the nurses were going to prepare her for anesthesia, she looked at me and said, Every night before I go to sleep, I pray. May I pray now? The surgeon said at that moment I was having troubles of my own with my son and in my home, and I had become a very unhappy person. So I answered her, Sure, honey. And pray for your doctor, too. And then she prayed, Jesus, tender shepherd, hear me. Watch your little lamb tonight. Through the darkness, be thou near me. Keep me safe till the morning light. And Jesus, bless the doctor, too, because... He's got troubles, too. The surgeon said it just broke me up. Embarrassed, I turned away from the others. I pretended to wash up again so that I could control myself and, and get rid of the tears. 
And then I prayed. The surgeon said, Oh God, I prayed. In my whole life, if you ever use me to save a life, use me now to save this little girl. The surgery was a success. Her life was saved against all odds. But the surgeon later said that he felt as if he had been the one operated on that day. During that surgery, he felt a great power of God come through him, a divine power like he had never felt before in his whole life. He said that many times in the past during surgery, he would have a lot of nervous energy, but there was a great calm that came over him, and he said he had not felt that in a long time, and certainly not during surgery. Then he said, it was as if something was guiding my hand. And through this calm, I was able to perform surgery with an intricate precision that I, of myself, could not do. As he turned to God in prayer, the surgeon's life was improved too. Dr. Alexia Carroll is a medical doctor who won a Nobel Prize. He wrote, Prayer is the most powerful form of energy that one can generate. The influence of prayer on the human mind and body is as demonstrable as that of a secreting gland. Its results can be measured in terms of increased buoyancy, greater intellectual vigor, moral stamina, and a deeper understanding of human relationships. Prayer is indispensable to the fullest development of the personality. Only in prayer do we achieve that complete, harmonious assembly of mind, body, and spirit, which gives the frail human need its unshakable strength. And when we pray, we liken ourselves with the inexhaustible motive that spins the universe. My friend, you have heard about Michelangelo and his wondrous works of art. He created some of the most fantastic statues that have ever been made. But do you know that he only finished 14 of them? He worked on 44 statues, but he only finished 14. If you were to go and look at some of his statues... It would take your breath away to see the, the incredible beauty and the gift of God that he was given. But it would also take your breath away to see some of the unfinished work out of a piece of marble. You might see a hand, a wrist, some fingers, part of a hand. On another, you might see a knee or a part of a leg or a part of a foot. Seeing these, you might have the thought of all the tragedies in a life. The greatest one is for a person to live and not be fully developed and not be fully formed into what she or he could be. To only be a good hand is not enough. To only be a good leg is not enough. You have to be complete. But completeness cannot be found in just the human being alone, but is found in your spiritual connection and your oneness with God. So many times... You feel like you just can't be complete because 
You just don't feel centered in your own thoughts, your emotions, and your spirit. And yet, when we take time to connect with God in prayer, we connect with our divine possibilities. Actually, I think the word possibilities could even take the place of the word prayer in your life. When you take time to connect with God, you take the time to connect with your best and your possibilities. You connect with all possibility with God. Nothing is impossible to you. You connect with God, your creator, the life energy behind a perfect hand, the life energy behind a perfect leg, the life energy behind all perfection, the divine idea, thoughts, the perfect thoughts behind a perfect mind are all in perfect synchronicity with God. When you connect with God, you connect with strength, that you didn't think that you had. You connect with God and all can be well again. In your life, prayer is like opening a floodgate of God's perfect good. Behind that floodgate is a force well beyond human power of absolute good, even greater good than you can conceive of from your own human mind. Prayer releases latent energy. It renews. It gives you vitality and power in the flesh. Once, <laughs> many years ago, I picked up a new automobile at a dealership. They wanted me to test the engine. They, they wanted to impress me with all the power that this this engine had. So they had me put the car in park. And then they said, now, rev up this engine to 5,000 RPM. Later on, I read the owner's manual about the break-in period. It was the worst thing that I could have done with that car. Well, the car is in park, and I rev up the engine to 5,000 RPM. The car shakes, and it quivers with suppressed energy. But I had the thought after that that this is a lot like me and like you. Often all of our potential is in park. The moment the energy is released, the moment the car is put into drive or the person is put into drive, there is a tremendous powerful forward movement. Drive in the human is prayer. Prayer in the Jesus Christ way, praying, believing without doubt, and knowing that you are praying for something that is coming to pass that you're going to receive because you and God are in partnership. The inward soul needs to be fed, not a food that you get at a restaurant, but the soul feeding from God for your inward soul. You may be stuffed with food, but your inward soul is often starved. It might not have been fed for a very long time. You may be soul starved, and you don't know why. There may be an uneasiness about your life. But my friend, when your inward soul is fed in prayer, there is an inward poise, a peace, a well-being, and a dominion. To neglect this causes you to stumble through life overburdened. And in time, we become irritable, tired, depleted, Prayer releases the old pressures, and stress builds silently. And then, all of a sudden, you're like a pressure keg 
if you don't pray. You don't know why, but you feel as if inside you're going to explode. Nothing has happened in the present moment, but still you feel so uneasy inside of yourself, and you know that you have to release some way, somehow. Prayer releases these old energies, these old feelings and old emotions, and it refreshes you with a whole new life, and it can heal disease, and it is that ultimate healing that comes to your soul, that manifests out in your body. In order to have successful prayer, you have to have a rhythm and a regularity of it. If I were doing this whole lesson today about air and trying to tell you how good air is, and if you were to take in just one breath, it would not do very soon, you would be depleted again. The thing is, the, the thing that makes air successful is the regularity of breathing. And the thing that makes prayer successful is a regularity of going to God, a regular talking with God, and a regular listening to God. My friend, I wish you the very best, and I pray that you'll take some time right now to go to God in prayer.